the Netherlands are full of bicycles. No, this is not just some cliché. In fact, there are more bicycles in the Netherlands than residents. In cities like Utrecht or Amsterdam or Den Haag, up to 70% of all journeys are made by bike. And that's totally different from what I know from my home country, for example. Cycling in a German city is always some kind of a life and death experience. You never know if you will come back home safely or if a car or a truck will kill you. Well, for some people this might be some kind of an adventure, <laughs> a cool adrenaline rush or something, but it's also a good reason not to take the bike in a German city. Here in the Netherlands it's different and I'd really like to find out why. So let's rent a bike. <laughs> those bikes is mine. So this is the very first time I rented an e-bike. Uh, I've never ridden an e-bike before. Is that different? I don't know. Let's try it. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm not really sure if I do it right. Actually, I don't really notice the engine. Okay, I am so stupid. Here's a little switch that you obviously have to press and then it's turned on. There's a button over here and there's a button over there. And now let's try it again. Oh, wow, wow. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, right. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, now I feel the engine. <laughs> Wow, oh, God. oh my God, this is fun. This is actually fun. This thing is faster than my car. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. I want to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. I want to ride it where I like. Okay, since I figured out how to ride an e-bike, I think it's time uh, to think about a route for today. And um, my plan is to go from Almere, which is the city right here where I rented the bike, to Hilversum, uh, a Dutch city that is like one and a half hours away from here with the bike. I don't know if I will reach Hilversum, but uh, at least we can try. Since we have an e-bike now, <laughs> it should actually be no problem at all. Uh, yeah, let's try. I love the Netherlands. <laughs> it's so beautiful here. Look at this. Look at this view. Oh, the only problem is... <laughs> The only problem is <laughs> my mouth and my nose are full of insects. <laughs> and they obviously love my white t-shirt. Look at this. This is the cycle lane and that is the street. Look at this. Look at this. How huge that is. Let's take a little break at the lake. <laughs> so, I've been driving around for some time now, so I think it's time for a very first resume. Cycling in the Netherlands 
is fun. And that's mainly because of the fact that it feels safe to do that here. There are these huge cycling lanes that lead through beautiful nature and that are totally separated from the roads where the cars drive. So you almost never get in contact with cars and that in the end makes it so safe to ride a bike in this country and that's totally different from what I know back home. So the question is why is that? Why did the Dutch decide to build a cycling infrastructure like that? And why is there such a huge cycling culture here in the Netherlands? Well, to answer that question, we need to go a bit back in time. Before World War II, journeys in the Netherlands, like in most European countries, were usually made by bike. That's not that special, because there were simply no real alternatives. But all this changed, of course, in the 1950s, when the car took over. The roads became increasingly conquested with cars and the result was a huge rise in the number of deaths on the roads. In 1971, more than 3,000 people were killed by motor vehicles in the Netherlands, 450 of them were children. This is really tragic, but this also happened in other countries when the car took over. The difference, however, is how the Netherlands reacted to this negative development. There has been an article of a journalist called Vic Langenhoff, whose own child had been killed in a road accident in the 1970s. After this article was published, a social movement was founded in the Netherlands demanding safer cycling conditions for children. It was called Stop the Kindermord, Stop the Child Murder. This movement became really huge and found more and more supporters and the car hype increasingly was being questioned by the population. And then the year 1973 came. The year of the Middle East oil crisis, an event that hit the Netherlands much harder than other countries. The Netherlands used to support Israel directly in the Yom Kippur war, so as a consequence the Arabic states turned off the oil tap for the Dutch people. And from one day to another the Netherlands had a huge problem which led to several unusual decisions. For example, there was an instruction to use the car as rarely as possible. Also a speed limit on highways was introduced to keep fuel consumption as low as possible. A rule that exists until today. But the most important effect of the crisis was actually that people started to rethink traffic and transport. This oil crisis in the Netherlands obviously showed the Dutch people that the car in general might not be like the only shimmering star in the sky and that it might not be such a good idea to only rely on the car and to convert entire cities for it. So what happened was, the Dutch government started to invest in improved cycling infrastructure and Dutch urban planners started to diverge from car-centric road building policies. They started to make cycling safer and more inviting, for example with a fast network of clearly marked and huge cycle paths. In many cities, these paths are completely separated from motorized traffic. Also on roundabouts, cyclists have priority. And if there is no space for cars and bikes at the same time, then there are huge signs that say bike street, cars are guests. Cities like Groningen, for example, have underground parking lots for 10,000s of bikes at their train stations. So here you can see when they build a new street, they also build a cycle path and uh, as you can see here it also is separated from the street so there is no chance that a car can drive on the cycle path and all that is not just some technical thing it's a culture even small children in the Netherlands learn to ride a bike shortly after they learn to walk. There are cycling lessons in Dutch schools. 90% of our students ride with a bike to school and most of the adults do the same on their daily commute to work. And this is not the end of the story. The Dutch government recently announced that it will invest another 345 million euros in cycling infrastructure to get 200,000 more people commuting by bike in three years time. 
15 routes will be developed into so-called cycling highways, 25,000 bike parking spaces will be created and more than 60 bike storage facilities will be upgraded according to the Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management. The newest idea? There are actually plans to pay people who decide to cycle to work instead of driving with the car with 19 cents per kilometer. And in the end, that is why in Germany and other European countries, there are streets like these. And in the Netherlands, there are streets like these. <laughs> I know exactly what I like better. times today when I was accidentally driving on the street because I'm just not used to it that there is a cycling path next to every single street. Every single street has a cycling path here in the Netherlands. If I would have something like that back home I would ride the bike every day and maybe I would also buy an e-bike <laughs> because this is really fun. Another thing I noticed, Dutch people obviously never use their brakes. They just drive. <laughs> and everybody else, pedestrians, cars, buses, vehicles like that one, <laughs> everybody will wait. The only sad thing I noticed is there are basically no benches or something next to these cycle paths. I don't know why. Maybe Dutch people never take a break. They just drive and drive and drive. <laughs> I don't know. I'd really like to take a break. I'm a tourist and I'm German. I need my Mittagspause. Honestly, I was so tired that evening that I totally forgot to film the end card of my video. So, here it is. <laughs> if you like my little bike ride, please leave a thumbs up. You can also hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss any upcoming video. And if you like to support me and my work, please check out the Patreon link in the description. That's it for today. Have a safe journey and see you next time. Ring ring!